Uh, I think we've come a long way, but when you look back on it, like I did on the preparation of this presentation, um, I saw a lot of problems and failures over the past two decades. And uh, so I think it seems we've come a long way, but we're only just starting. If you compare it to, let's say, space travel, I think where we're now is that we, we reached the moon, but that's about it. So there's still a lot to come. What I think that we uh, still need to better understand is which patients really uh, benefit from EVAR. So we know the technique, we know we can do it, but there's obviously some patients that benefit more than others, and maybe some are even harmed. That's what we need to learn in the future. One of the higher points, I think, was when we realized that we could do this. We could actually treat an aneurysm through a small incision in the groin. That was maybe the most fantastic realization, that it seemed to be working. Which brings along, of course, the nightmares, which are the failures and the problems. And it's, it's been, again, looking back the, the past two decades, or maybe we're hitting the three decades mark on human implants. The, the number of problems and complications and unexpected issues is just enormous. So uh, that's a continuous nightmare. Well, we don't really know what the, uh, what the guidelines are going to be at this moment. Uh, I suspect it will not be as, uh, as terrible as it was uh, initially proposed. And especially for the ruptured EVAR patients, I think we're going to continue to do it and improve uh, EVAR and ruptured aneurysm patients. And, uh, but we're just going to have to see. Well, it's small, obviously, as I've shown that only uh, half percent of the patients are, 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 were treated inside the randomized trials worldwide. Uh, but still, a randomized trial, it's an experiment. It's an experiment where you really control all or as much as variables as you can. And that's how you learn. So it's extremely important and it helps us inform the patients. But I think what is one of the nightmares is that the randomized controlled trial data is being used to construct guidelines in day-to-day -day practice. I think that that should be done with extreme care not to overgeneralize. I think what is already happening is that with the newer device technology, more complex devices that better suit the individual patients are around. And we will learn to better apply these in, in the specific patients that need that. The future is always different than when we think about it. Things change and one important change has been the incidence of aneurysmal disease. And if you look back, it's going down. And, and very recently, the number of ruptured aneurysms is going down by 40%. And the, the aneurysms we see, it's all going down. And it, it may be due to earlier detection, hypertension treatment, cardiovascular risk management, mostly cessation of smoking habits. But the disease may be going away before we know it.